All praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wa Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you true, sincere brethren out there, pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with this word, and to the rest of the church who believe as well. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him, none of this would even be possible. All right? So I'm going to start this off in the book of uh, probably hit Joel. All right? This is the book of Joel 2, and I'm going to start at verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is a great and very terrible. Let me read that again. Joel 2 and 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? So who's the Lord's army? The Lord's army is speaking of the elect men on earth right now. Okay? The elect is being gathered through this word. And through this word going out, you have men waking up in various places. Here in America, Europe, Africa, wherever they may be, wherever the elect is, they're waking up. Okay? So the Lord is the cause of it, man. So here in these last days, the fact that you're seeing us waking up in this truth, this is a great sign. All right? In fact, let me hit uh, Ezekiel right quick. This is the book of Ezekiel 24 and verse 24. Thus Ezekiel is unto you a sign, according to all that he hath done shall ye do. And when this cometh, ye shall know that I am the Lord God. So Ezekiel was a sign. Who was Ezekiel? He was a prophet of the Lord. So the Lord is waking up prophets all throughout the earth because we are a sign unto you. And what does that sign represent? That sign shows you that we're coming in to a great time. And that great time being a time of destruction, a very dark time. Not a time of happiness, not a time of playing around and lollygagging and joking, all right? But according to prophecy, according to things that are happening around the earth, we know that Yahweh Shai is soon to return, all right? So just as it says here in Ezekiel, Ezekiel was sent as a sign unto you, all right? So we're sent as a sign unto you, showing you that destruction's about to come, all right? So let's go to the book of 2 Ezra. All right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra 9 and 1. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So according to the scriptures, we know what time it is based off of measuring the time. Now, according to the Bible, how do you measure the time? You measure the time according to prophecy. Okay, we know what time we're in based off of the things that are happening in the world. Okay, when you watch um, alternative news, they're talking a lot about World War III. When you watch alternative news, they're talking about the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast, which shows you the times that we're in. Now, you have many people who will say, well, we've been hearing about the return of the Messiah for years. Well, what makes this different is the fact that the prophets are out here. Okay, the fact that the nuclear missiles have been created and are ready to be used. The fact that the RFID chip is not only here, but you have people getting it already. So these signs show that we're in the end. Okay? And according to uh, the scriptures, it says measure the times. Because prophecies are like seasons. Alright? So let me go to uh, Luke 21 and 25. This is Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon 
and just yesterday, I think it was, yeah, it was yesterday, the moon was really close looking. It was really big in the sky, okay? Now that's a sign that Yahweh Shai is coming soon. You have signs in the moon because the moon is red at times. It's called a blood moon, showing that Yahweh Shai is coming soon. And that blood moon symbolizes the judgment that is coming to earth. Seeing signs in the sun, all right? Seeing signs in the sky in general, all right? And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves warring. And the seas and the waves roaring, that's going into people. Yeah, people, you know, in certain parts of the earth, going chaotic, man, losing their minds, bugging out, okay, because of lack of food, because of um, the, the BS that their government is promoting. So people are starting to rise up and causing a, a sense of anarchy to an extent in certain parts of the earth. But as time goes by, it's going to start picking up more and more and more. All right, so let me jump down to verse 29. Luke 21 and 29. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is nigh at hand. So you can tell what season we're in by looking at the trees, by looking at the ground, looking at uh, the weather. You know, if it's cold outside, there's a good chance that it's winter. If it's hot outside, all right, you see a lot of flowers growing and things like that, it's a good chance that it's summer, all right? So the same thing with prophecies. When you see certain prophecies come to pass, you know what season we're in. And we're in the season of the end, the, the, the final chapter of the final chapter, all right? And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. So when you start seeing certain prophecies come to pass, you know that the kingdom is at hand. All right? So that's the time we're in. Right now, we're still in captivity. We still have to go to work. We still have to pay bills. You can still be sick. You can still... Uh, be fatigued or whatnot, but those days are coming to an end. And the fact that the prophets are out here is a sign unto you showing you that those days are almost up. All right? Uh, verse 32, Luke 21 and 32. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. And this is that generation. This is the generation that is going to see the return of Yahweh Shai. And once again, how do we know that? Because of prophecies. Things that are happening in the earth are showing you that this has to be the generation. This is the same generation that was here during the time of Yahweh Shai. Okay? The people who are here on this earth who are rejecting us, rejected Yahweh Shai in their past life. The men who are waking up in this truth and who remain and who endure. They were the men of the Lord written of in the scriptures. All right? So this is that generation that is going to see the return of Yahweh Shai. Okay? Let's jump down to Luke 21 and 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Esau's heaven is going to pass away. Okay? Certain parts of this earth are going to be destroyed. All right, but the earth is going to abide forever. So it's not literally speaking of the earth being done away with. And it's not speaking of heaven that you know of in terms of some place where you float in the clouds with the halo over your head being done away with. That's speaking of Esau's rulership. Esau's rulership is going to be done away with because this is his kingdom, all right? In fact, let me jump to um, Revelations. 21 and 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth all right so heaven and earth is going to pass away which means Esau and his kingdom Esau and his world his aeon right now the earth is under his rulership but the rulership to come is going to be under the Israelites 
for an eternity, starting with Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, King David, the rest of the 12, all right, and the rest of the elect, down to um, the rest of the great um, multitude of the uh, outside of the 144,000 and the rest of the nation of Israel. We're going to have dominion of this earth and the whole universe. And we're also going to have dominion over you heathen nations. All right. And I saw Revelations 21 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. All right. So the first earth and the first heaven is going to pass away. Because the earth right now is given into the hand of the wicked. Who is the wicked? The wicked is Esau. Okay. And it says no more sea. That's speaking of the great multitude of people in this world, a lot of them are going to be destroyed, okay? Just like when you're, let's say you're at a football stadium, and let's say you drive over that stadium, not drive, but let's say you fly over that stadium, they look like a sea of people, all right? So um, there's going to be a new earth. So it's going to be the same earth, but the rulership of the earth is going to be trans uh, transferred from one people to another. See, right now the earth is given to Esau. This is Job. This is Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, wherein who is he? So the earth is given into the wicked. Who is the wicked? The wicked, according to the scriptures, is Esau. Okay, so let's read that again. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. All right, so this earth is going to pass away in a sense of the wicked having dominion over it is not going to have dominion anymore. It's going to be uh, translated or transferred from one people to another. All right? He covered the faces of the judges thereof. And who are the judges? Well, if you look in the Bible, you have a book known as the Book of Judges. This book is for the Israelites. So the judges are Israelites. And the primary judge who they turned into one of them is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. When you look up images of Yahweh Shai, it's always an Edomite. It's always a pale face, a red face, okay? Which, when you look at the term white, that didn't come around until the uh, late 1600s. I believe it was 1681, all right? And then for the nations to be separated by color, to be called black, white, or whatever the case, that was started by a man named Johann Blumenbach. Really, your nationality is not based off of your skin complexion, but based off of your lineage according to your father's line. All right? But like the scripture said, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Well, according to the Bible, Esau is the wicked. All right? So let's get that. Going into the book of Malachi, all right? This is the book of Malachi. One and one. Or, excuse me. Let's start at four. Malachi one and four to get to the point. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So the Lord has righteous anger against Edomites, the so-called white race, forever, man. All right? Because of what they did to the children of Israel. Okay? And when you look at Esau, it said that he's the border of wickedness. Why? Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. So Esau right now has dominion on this earth. That's why his face is on the Federal Reserve note. That's why his face is on your penny, your, your nickel, your quarter. Okay? You don't see our faces on that money because this isn't our world. So there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. There's going to be a completely new rulership. But right now, you know, the rulership is under the wicked. Esau, the so-called white man. Okay? And he's known as the border of wickedness. And that's why... The majority of people in this society, including Edomites, are mourning, they're suffering. Because Esau does not know how to rule people properly. He's the devil. All he knows how to do is to cause confusion, to destroy, okay, and to conquer by the sword. And not by a fair fight either. 
okay? He's pretty much the, the bully who picks on the weak, all right? Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. And that's what you're constantly seeing here in America. Esau building up new buildings, trying to build new skyscrapers. Trump's trying to build the wall. But here it is, America, which is known as Babylon in the scriptures, is going to be destroyed, okay? That's why you might hear some of us say death to America. It's not because we're radical Islamic, Islamist terrorists, but it's because that's what the scriptures say. And we're going according to what our Lord says, the words that are found in the scriptures, okay? Now, you're not going to find the word America in the Bible. You're not going to find the word Africa in the Bible, okay? You're not going to find the word Europe in the Bible. But nevertheless, the Bible covers everything, especially things that matter, things that are going to um, have an impact here in these last days when it comes to prophecy, all right? Just like uh, the ICBMs were prophesied in the scriptures, but you're not going to open the book and see something that says nuclear missiles, okay? For one, it wasn't created back then, all right? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, which when you go into the word host, it means uh, the Lord of armies. They shall build, but I will go down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So the Lord has indignation against Esau, the so-called white race, man. And that's what the Bible says. So if you have a problem with that, don't get mad at me. Take it up with Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, the one who created you to be the devil. Okay, because that's exactly what you are. You Edomites are the devil. And you Israelites who follow behind him, you are of your father the devil. Which matter of fact, I'm going to get that in John, all right? This is the book of John 8 and uh, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. And that's you Israelites who follow after the so-called white man, the devil, all right? If you want to follow after his ways, if you want to follow after his democracy, if you want to put your woman above you, if you think homosexuality is okay, if you think calling on Jesus and, and seeing him as a pale-faced peckerwood is, is your Messiah, your Savior, then you are of your father the devil, okay? Period. A lot of you Israelites, it's not just Esau who's the, the, uh, the devil the Bible speaks of, but a lot of you Israelites, you're also the devil that the Bible speaks of because you follow after the devil, okay? John 8 and 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. So going back to Cain, that was back when the devil had melanin, all right? But he was cursed with, with, uh, with leprosy, okay? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So Esau just comes up with all sorts of lies, man. When you're dealing with the devil, you're not dealing with facts. You're dealing with theories. You're not dealing with truth. You're dealing with opinions and feelings, okay? And a lot of you Israelites, you run off of that same vibration because ye are of your father the devil, okay? It's not hard to understand, okay? He is the devil. Esau, the so-called white man, is the devil that the Bible speaks of, okay? Period, point blank. And once again, you know, if you have a problem with that, don't take it up with me. Take it up with Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai because... Uh, these things are found in the scriptures, and I'm not adding to the scriptures. I'm reading to you what the Bible says, okay? I'm going to jump to the book of Isaiah 1 and 18. Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So sin is compared to the color red. Okay? And that's how we know that Esau is the man of sin because when you look in the scriptures, Esau came out red. So sin is compared to the color red. Esau came out red because he's the man of sin, okay? And those of you who follow behind Esau, ye are of your father the devil, 
Why? Because the Bible says so. Okay? And a lot of you, you always have an issue with the scriptures that we bring out because we're bringing it to you straightforward. We're not watering it down. Okay? We're doing what the Bible tells us to do by giving you the whole truth, man. By giving you uh, this water. All right? Genesis 25. Genesis 25, and I'll start at um, 25. And the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. This isn't speaking of a newborn baby who came out hairy. Name one baby you know who came out the womb looking hairy, unless it was some kind of gorilla or, or some, some ape or something like that. It's not speaking of that, okay? But the reason why... Uh, it compares it to a hairy garment is because when you read the scriptures it tells you how we used to dye our garments in red Okay, so Esau came out red and the reason why it said his color because at that time everybody was melanated Everybody was brown. Okay. He was the first one to come out looking red All right, so read that again Genesis 25 and 25 the first came out red all over like a hairy garment and they call his name Esau. So Esau is the man of sin. I read to you in Isaiah 1 and 18 how sin is compared to the color red. Esau came out red because once again, he is the man of sin. And the man of sin has been revealed here in these last days. He's being exposed all the time. You just watched one pass, man. That's the man of sin right there, all right? Jeremiah 7 Jeremiah 7 and 25 Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day I have even sent unto you all my servants the prophets daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. So the Lord always raised up the prophets to come out here and prophesy unto you. But as always, we come out here and we get rejected. No one cares to listen. They just walk by. They treat us like we're just, you know, like we're not here, like we're just Greek statues or something, man. But we're actually the men of the Lord. And I believe that through confidence. I don't say that because I'm great or, or you know because I'm, I'm arrogant or anything like that but the fact that the Lord still has a spirit on me to do this against all odds even seeing that you know many people don't listen I might as well you know start grabbing some bird food start feeding the birds and start talking to them you know start talking to the squirrels because our people don't want to listen you know but nevertheless the Lord always woke up his prophets to come out here and prophesy that's just how he does it man and he gives you the warning through his prophets but what happens is many people reject the prophets and when they reject the prophets really they're rejecting the heavenly father and Yahweh Shai they're rejecting Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai okay and the proof go to Luke right quick This is Luke 10. Wrong chapter, my bad. This is Luke 10 and verse 16. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despiseth me, and he that despiseth me despising him that sent me okay so the lord always woke up his prophets or risen up his prophets to come out here and prophesy now we know that many people aren't going to listen that's fine but nevertheless the lord has a spirit on us to just do it anyway man <laughs> you know what i'm saying i mean that's that's pretty much what it is you know like i don't i don't expect people to listen to me anymore and i don't say that through a lack of faith but based off of you know, the uh, actions of these people here. I don't expect no Israelite to wake up at this point and, and really come into this thing. 
And I'm not one of them guys who's going to let some man in my camp and then try him and see if he's worthy after being in my camp. No, I'm going to try you before you're in this thing. I don't care to be a leader. I don't care to be the, the head man in charge. I just want to do this work, and I hope to be delivered. I hope my household gets delivered. Simple as that, man. I've been rejected for so long to where I get mad sometimes. That's going to happen. I'm just a man in the flesh. But at the same time, I really don't even care. You know, I have to do this for the sake of my own salvation. Okay, that's why the scriptures tell us to uh, seek out our salvation with fear and trembling. We should fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, knowing what he can do to you. All right, so anyway, Luke 10 and 16. He that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despiseth you, despiseth me, and he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Okay, so we have a duty, we have a job to do. And the fact that we're being rejected, that's okay. Because according to Proverbs uh, 18 and 12, which I'll get. This is Proverbs 18 and 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. So being rejected is actually a beautiful thing because the scriptures tell you before honor is humility. So the fact that we're going through humiliation, people acting like we're not here, they don't want to listen to what we have to say, that's fine because this is actually leading to our honor. You're actually looking at future kings, man. You know, Lord willing, I'll be one of those men. You're looking at a future king, all right? For real, man. And this society is going down. Whether you people believe it or not, man. The Lord is waking up the men of the Lord. All right? And you may not believe it, but who cares what you do and don't believe it doesn't change anything all that matters is the lord is going to do exactly what he said he was going to do he said he was going to wake up his men he was going to send his men out here give you the forewarning before things happen and then eventually everything was going to happen that he said and if you don't believe it it's not going to change anything which in fact uh let me get romans This is Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the power without effect? God forbid. Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So the fact that you don't believe, it's not going to change anything, man. It's, it's come to the point like, for you not to believe me, it's almost second nature. Just like breathing, you know? Or just like when I eat my food and I swallow it. Just like when I drink my water. It's, it's, it's second nature. So the fact that a lot of people reject me and they don't listen, it's to the point now that it really doesn't make me feel no type of way. Now, there's certain days I'm a little more vexed, you know? I might be irritated in the spirit, but, but really, I don't expect people to get it here where I live, man. You know, they may not get it. The scriptures tell you that uh, the Lord may even save one of a city and, and two of a family, I believe it says, which I may have to get that. Okay, but being rejected, being humiliated, that's a part of um, our route to receiving those crowns, man. You even have brothers in this truth who probably hate me, you know, for whatever reason, without cause. But, you know, that's cool too, man. I'm still out here. You see me standing alone, doing what I need to do, hoping that I receive salvation. I didn't do nothing to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never went against no brother. I ain't never stole from a brother. I ain't never, you know what I'm saying, uh, tried to pop no brother's wife or steal from a brother or, you know, uh, look at him with an evil eye. But, you know, brothers may feel that way about me for whatever reason, which is okay. Because my main, my main concern is that I get delivered up out of here, that I receive salvation. Even if I look like... I may not be a man of the Lord because people don't listen to me. People reject me. People act like I'm not here. And sometimes it gets to me. I won't lie. I'm not going to act like I'm just a, a a guy with no no emotions or whatever. Of course, I have those emotions. But ultimately, um, just like anything, you get used to it, man. I'm used to being alone. You know, it's to the point I wouldn't even 
feel right to even have a camp. You know, it would be awkward because I've been out here alone for so long, you know. But nevertheless, you know, back to my point, um, whoever doesn't believe is not going to change prophecy. And the scriptures tell you that, you know, Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And not believing in prophecy is not going to stop what's already been foretold. Okay? Just like if, um, if I saw a movie and I can explain to somebody what the movie was about and they could totally not believe it, does that mean that's not what happened in that movie that's already been written? No, it's, it's going to happen exactly what I just said because I saw it. Now, you didn't see it. So you might say, that didn't happen. I don't believe that. Well, that's cool. It doesn't change that that's what happened. And that is, <laughs> that is, that's the truth, man. So the same with the prophecies, man. The fact that people don't believe the script, the script's already been written, it doesn't change that that is what is going to happen. Long story short, okay? Romans 3 and 3, 3 and 4. Okay, 3 and 3, actually. For what if some did not believe, which really it's many. What if many don't believe? Okay. So their unbelief make the faith of the power without effect. So now that, you know, many people don't believe, is Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai just going to change his mind and say, well, these people don't really seem interested. I might as well, you know, rethink some things. No, man. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai said certain things are going to happen and that's what it's going to be. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is waking up his men waking up his people in general to the fact that we're Israelites, as he said he would do. And you have many who don't believe that. Does that make it not true? No, not at all, man. All right? God forbid, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. So if a man is coming to you and he's speaking contrary to what the Bible says, you know flat out from the beginning that man is an absolute liar. He can't be trusted, man. All right? He can't be trusted. You can't trust someone who fights against the scriptures, who wrestles against Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I mean, how stupid can you be, man? Okay? How stupid can you be? And, you know, our people, the scriptures tell you, but our people are a, a, uh, a sottish people, a simple-minded, a, a stupid people. Who have been destroyed for a lack of knowledge, man. Okay? And really, when it comes down, our people really destroyed themselves. Because the word is right here in the Bible. How we're supposed to be is found in the Bible. And if you don't understand, the Lord risen up his men for you to understand it. But it's like you still don't want to receive it. Okay? So, really the only thing left for the Lord to do is to start bringing that judgment, man. And to start putting people to death. All right? Go to the book of Jeremiah. This is the book of Jeremiah 5 and 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof, if you can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon him. So that's what I'm out here doing, man. I'm out here seeking if there's any man who is pretty much predestined to wake up and to come into this thing because I don't decide that much. All I'm sent to do is to bring the word out and maybe some men will come in, you know? But if not, that's not up to me. It sucks at times, oh well, I gotta get over it. But the Lord already sent out the uh, documentation. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. So the truth is found in the streets, as the Bible says. Where are you going to find the truth? In the churches? No. Where are you going to find the truth? From your boss at work? No. Is Esau going to come to you and tell you, hey, you know you're the people of God? No, man. You might have a few Edomites out there who know, but they're ultimately not going to tell you. So the Bible is telling the Israelite men, the prophets, to come out here and seek for those who are like-minded, just as you are, to wake up to this truth. Hey, that's a beautiful dress you got on, ma'am. Beautiful dress. 
Jeremiah 5 and 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment that seeketh the truth, then I will pardon. So a lot of people don't really care for the truth. They're not really seeking for the truth. But the, the Lord is waking up men who actually have the truth. And that's why when you go to the book of Isaiah, I believe it's uh, Isaiah 54. I'm going to see right quick. This is Isaiah 54. No, that's not it. Let's see, it might be 56. Give me a second. I know it's somewhere in Isaiah, but it, it speaks about how truth has failed in the streets. Okay? Let's see, Isaiah 59 and 14. This is Isaiah 59 and verse 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. So there's no real justice in this society because the so-called white man is in power right now. He's in control. All right? And seeing how truth has uh, pretty much been looked at as a lie, truth has failed in the streets. So that's why the Lord has woke up his men to come out here in the streets. To bring that truth out, man, to be a light unto the world. Because according to the scriptures, the men of the Lord are looked at as the children of light. And Yahweh is known as the father of lights. So if he's the father of lights, his sons will have to be the children of light or the sons of light. Okay? Common sense. So our duty, our mission is to seek for men who are like-minded as we are to come into this thing. But if you are like myself and... It doesn't seem like there's any. Does that mean close the book and say, you know what, Lord, there's nobody there. I'm not, there's no point of teaching no more. You think he's going to understand and be like, you're right. At least you tried. No, man. You have to do this. You have to do this anyway because this is a sign of uh, humility, which is before honor. This is a sign of faith. It's a sign of uh, obedience, doing what the Lord asked you to do regardless. Okay? And that's how you're going to be rewarded. Okay? Uh, Isaiah 59 and 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth the far off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yeah, truth felleth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey, and the Lord saw it, and it, dis and it displeased him that there was no judgment. So the fact that, you know, we're serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, we're bringing out these videos. You better believe Esau's mad. The elites of e the elites of Edom are pissed off. They're irritated, man, through the spirit. They watch these videos, probably eating some potato chips, laughing at us, thinking to themselves, I can't wait to get my hands on these damn bastards. How dare them try to tell us that we're going into slavery? You know, a lot of them probably just have fantasies of the, the, the sick, sadistic, evil things they'd like to do to us, man. You know, a lot of these devils, they have fantasies of putting us under that guillotine, man. They, they can't wait. Because the fact of us, you know, turning away from evil, we made ourselves a prey to the so-called white man. That's why the scriptures tell you that we are sheep. We are, we are sheep among wolves, all right? And that primary wolf is Esau, the so-called white man. And that includes the woman too. All right. What was I about to go to? Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh yeah. Okay. So to back up this scripture saying how truth fell in the street. Well, one of my um, verses that I like to go to in the book of John. If you're one of the two people who watch my <laughs> one of the two people who watch my videos, you might know what I'm going to. This is John. <laughs> this is John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the fact that we have the truth, the fact that we're free spiritually, we, we made ourselves a prey to Esau, the so-called white man. And that's why Esau is about to uh, 
come down with great wrath because, well, let me just get that. This is Revelations 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, speaking of you Israelites, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And that's why Esau's poisoning everybody, man. Through vaccines, through, you know, what you will call geoengineering, what some will know as chemtrails, through uh, GMO foods, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Esau is messing up everything and trying to destroy everyone because he knows that he has but a short time, which goes into his um, his New World Order because these devils, when you look on the Georgia Guidestone, they're trying to take down 90% of the population. And one way they're trying to go about doing that is to turn men against women, to turn women against men, to turn men into women, to turn women into men, okay? through vaccines, through uh, putting poisons in your food. But the thing is, it's not going as fast as Esau would like it. So now it's coming to a point of, he's going to have to bring in martial law. He's going to have to force the chip upon people to where you take it or get put to death. Why? Because he knows that he has a short time. He knows that if he doesn't hurry up, he gonna run out of time before he has his opportunity. A lot of these elites, a lot of the ones who really want to see this go on, this New World Order, they're up in age. So this is that generation. That's why it says the devil knows that he has a short time because a lot of these elites, a lot of these devils, they're up in age about to die, man. Okay? They're trying to see this New World Order happen before they go to the grave. And they know, seeing that the Israelites are waking up, that they have a short time even if they don't believe. The fact that we're bringing it to them through these videos, they, they know what's going on, okay? They ain't stupid. You people may not watch our videos, but you better believe the elites are. They're the ones messing with our views, man. They're the ones who have control and dominion over everything. You might have 200 people watching your video and it only tells you seven. You might have 20 likes, but it tells you two. Esau will do these things to discourage you because you made yourself a prey. And Esau doesn't want this truth getting out, man. And the scriptures tells you before honor is humility. So a lot of us have to go through this humiliation. Esau will get his hands on some of us. Okay, we might be humiliated and, and be treated just like they did our Lord. Not as bad, but they, you know, they might spit on us, might whoop our ass physically, might put us under the guillotine. Whatever may happen, but at the same time, it's not going to be like it was in the ancient world, man. Okay? This is the generation where you people have to pay, man. We done been martyrs over and over again. We done dealt with you people being rebellious and stiff-necked, giving us a hard time over and over again. Okay? So now the Lord, he's about to uh, wake us up, man. Not wake us up, but rise us up. All right? He's about to give us that kingdom, man, which we would have been had it. But, you know, this is the process that the Lord is doing. All right. So Esau knows that his time is short. Seeing that the earth was given to him, the earth is about to be took from him. Yahweh Shai is about to take it. All right. But anyway, now let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra. 6 and 9. And, you know, I'm running through the spirit right now. I didn't have nothing planned. So I'm just going in the spirit. Uh, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9 For Esau is the end of the world And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it So Esau is the end of the world And it's funny because Esau is the cause Of the end of his own world The fact that he's doing all this wickedness He's bringing his own world to an end He's 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 uh, he's speeding up the process Of his kingdom Being brought to an end Okay And that's a beautiful thing And seeing that we have the next rulership Hey, man, that's a beautiful thing, man. So it makes sense why we're looked at as the bottom in this society. But you have a lot of people waking up and knowing that, hey, man, those are the people of God. 
we've been deceived. All right, the scriptures tell you how their fathers, being these Edomites, their fathers have inherited lies. And we're the ones bringing it to light, how you Edomites have been lied to. You're not so-called white, you're red. Okay, you're the color of sin. All right, you women are not above men, but the man is above you. And that's why, you know, you have many women out there who get in all sorts of doctrine because the Bible doesn't uplift them over the men. It doesn't make them comfortable. All right, because they're wicked. All right. Second Ezra six and nine for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. All right. So this is Esau's world, and that's another reason why, you know, we have to go through oppression and, you know, all these things that we deal with. But uh, Esau's kingdom is at its very last breaths. He's, take, he's taking his last breath. Alright? In this society, you know, uh, low-level Edomites are even suffering, according to Ecclesiastes 4 and 14. Okay? Isaiah 51. And I'll start at, um, Isaiah 51 and 14. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. So, be free. And if you're in this truth, you should be hastening to be free. You should want Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai to come back and return. You should want America to be destroyed, because in order for us to be free, America has to go down, man. America can't be you know, exalted, and then here we are ruling in the kingdom at the same time, man. Righteousness and wickedness can't rule at the same time. You can't take oil and water and then stir it up, even if you stir it up for a whole day and then expect it to come together. It's going to always be separated. So the same thing with righteousness and wickedness. Either one has to be up and the other has to be down. All right? And right now, we're in a wicked world, so righteousness is, uh, it seems difficult. There are things that are righteous, but this society makes it difficult. You got to look at the back of certain foods to make sure there's no pork in it. Now it's the time of the, uh, the Passover. You have to check certain foods, make sure there's no leaven. Because this society makes righteousness difficult. It's not that being righteous is a burden, but this society makes it a burden. All right. So yeah, just like I read, man, uh, the captive exile should want to be loose, man. You you should want freedom, according to the scriptures. So Isaiah fifty one and fourteen, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loose, and that he should not die in a pit, nor that his bread should fail. All right. So and that's why the Messiah is coming to deliver his people, man, because his people are still in slavery this day. All right. This land, which was taken from our people, more so the uh, the northern kingdom, Gad, Reuben, uh, you had Issachar here, you had uh, some of Ephraim here, or Ephraim, however you like to pronounce it. You know, you had our people here, and Esau just came and took it, all right? Just because you take something doesn't make it yours, just because you took it. It's stolen property, all right? A lot of things here are stolen. You have men walking around with another man's wife knowing that she has a man at home you have uh, people getting carjacked you got you know this whole land has been stolen I mean everything's just out of whack here man so we we need freedom because there's no freedom here in this society the fact that you have to go to work and if you don't go to work you have to uh Bear the consequences of being homeless. Bear the consequences of not having money in your pocket. Okay, so what would be the point of wanting to stay here, man? All right, that, that's oppression. Being under a people who hate you, who look at you as less when the scriptures exalt you and tell you that you're the greatest people on earth. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. 
Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. So you have certain of our people who may go through oppression. They may have been raised up in the ghetto, the projects, okay? Raised up in some kind of uh, messed up community, you know, the uh, reservation. But then Esau may come with his craftiness, pay him off, give him a little extra money, and then they totally forget about their poverty, okay? You have people like Floyd Mayweather because now that they have money, now that they're rich, they just shit on everybody else, man. They don't, they, people like that don't care about their people because their, their mind has been destroyed by the gift that Esau's given them. You know, the, the little bit of so-called riches and, and the fame that Esau can give you destroys the mind of our people, man. But either way it goes, even if you're doing decent in this society, you should still be mad seeing how something is up because most of your people are not doing as good as you. But that makes you feel good about yourself, seeing your people suffering. You're not, man. Because your your thoughts have been destroyed from that gift by Esau. Esau done paid you out with bribery. All right? That's why the scriptures tell you how the wicked seduce our people, man. All right? Let's see if I can find that. This is Proverbs 12 and 26. Yep. Oh, this is the book of Proverbs 12 and 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. All right? Because a gift destroys the heart, man. A lot of our people go through uh, a lot of poverty, catching hell, but then they get prosperity and they forget their poverty. Which you can find that in the Apocrypha, man. How, you know, prosperity makes you forget about your affliction. You know, there might be a time in your life where you can't afford any heat in your house, so you have to use the oven for heat. You might not have any lights. Can't pay your light bill, so you got candles lit at night. Okay? But then you might come across some money, and then you become arrogant and cocky, and then you start to, you know, shit on your own people, so to speak thinking that you did it all by yourself. No man makes it on his own, man. Any any man in this world who's rich or wealthy or whatever the case, he had help from somebody else. But a lot of wealthy people act as if they got it on their own. But even on a higher level, it's Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai who uh, exalted them and gave them the things that they have. Okay? So our people are constantly being seduced by the wicked, man. We're the righteous people. But, you know, being in poverty and then being seduced by money and other things like that can cause you to be wicked. Okay? But our people don't want to listen to that. This is uh, Sirach 21 and 14. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel, and he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. So you might tell our people these things, and they don't care. They don't want to hear it, man because they're like a broken vessel. If you took a, a, a vessel that was broke, let's say you took a cup and that cup was broke at the bottom and you just kept pouring liquid in it. You're wasting your time, man. It's not going to hold it. If you had a vessel and it had a, a huge hole on the side, it might hold it for a very small time, but it's gonna seep right off the side, man. So our people are broken vessels. They might hold on to the truth for a little bit, but they're like a, a, a vessel with a hole in it to where it's just slowly seeping out to the point where it's just no more. All right? So our people don't have knowledge, and that's why the scriptures tell us that our people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge, man. They don't care to hear these things. They get paid off. They get the Federal Reserve notes. You know, they uh, all of a sudden get to have some fun, a little bit of fun on this side, and then they shit on their people, man. But Esau doesn't allow them to help out their people because if they did they're gonna lose all of it and they know it man but they don't have the character or the integrity to say you know what fuck that man if my people are gonna suffer i'm gonna just suffer with them man you know they, they sell out sacrifice their loved ones to, to bail for fortune and fame 
you know? Get, get sodomized for fortune and fame. Do all sorts of evil for fortune and fame. For what, man? You know? Just to have a little bit of... Uh, uh, a little bit of the pie or whatever. But even then, if you are... A, a, even if you're an Israelite and you're a billionaire, you're still getting paid breadcrumbs, man, because you don't know what you lost, man. You have no idea what Esau took from you. And you're settling for less. All right? Uh, Sirach 21 and 14 again. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel, and he will hold no knowledge as long as he lives. And this knowledge is that water, man. They're like a broken vessel that can't hold water. All right? And you have some, like I said, they might hold the water for a little bit, but it just seeps out over time to where it's just gone. And that's the men who come in and fall out. You know what I'm saying? Which were predestined to, to, to be condemned anyway. Let's go to the book of um, Hosea. Since our people, like it said, I like broken vessels and can't hold knowledge. This is Hosea 4 and 6. My people, being the Israelites, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. So the Lord is saying this. Look, you want to forgive me? I'm going to forget you as well, man. I'm not a, a, a guy who's just going to cry and boo-hoo and ask, Why? Why don't you want to love me? Why don't you want to accept what I'm giving you? Why would you do that to me? The Lord's like, you know what? Cool. You reap what you sow. You want to treat me like shit? I'm going to treat you like shit. Okay? You want to act as if you don't need me? Well, I'm going to show you that I don't need you. All right? To the point, he's even going to reject your children. And if you're a man in your right mind, you love your children. You want their safety. You know? You want to know where their whereabouts are. The Lord's going to really afflict our people with some, some harsh judgments, man. Okay? He's going to bring a lot of evil to our people because they reject this knowledge. They reject this truth. Okay? Israelites just drive by and they'll stare, you know, and they don't they don't have anything to do. You know, they don't have they're not going to work. They they ain't doing nothing, man. A lot of these Israelites who drive by, they have some free time and they're not gonna stop, man. Okay? So the Lord's gonna reject them when the time comes. He's gonna mock them when the time comes. Alright? I'm going to close it out in Sirach. This is the book of uh, Sirach 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. So don't say, you know what? I know it's in my heart to go out and teach, but I want to make sure I'm ready, so I'm going to wait a few months. But you didn't heard this truth seven months ago, okay? Or you might say, well, I know the order's been out to put out at least three videos a week, but, you know, when I get a chance, I'll, I'll try to put one up a few days from now. And then you don't even do it. You constantly make excuses and you put off the Lord from day to day. Now, there's going to be times where you might, you, you might be weak in the spirit and you may not be on fire, whether it be, you know, distractions, your spirit's just down or whatever. You may need to fast or pray. You may even be too weak to where you, you don't even fast, man, because you, you just, you're just off. You know, you, you might have those moments, but nevertheless, you never allow yourself to just totally uh, uh, flee from the Lord, man. You always want to make sure that your mind's on this one way or another. And if you're not doing videos or if you're not um, doing what you're supposed to do, you should feel a certain way about it. You shouldn't be careless. You shouldn't be constantly putting off the Lord from day to day to day to day to day. Two, three, four, five, six weeks gone by and you ain't done no videos. Okay? Two, three, four, five, six weeks done went by you ain't watched no videos. Okay? Don't put off the Lord from day to day, man. Don't, don't treat him like he's some side bitch. All right? Which really there ain't no such thing as, as a side chick, man. There's wives and concubines. But don't, don't treat the Lord like he... he uh, like he has to pay for your time or something, man. 
All right? Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai don't need us, man. He don't need you. So, so don't put off the Lord from day to day. I'm going to read this one more time and I'm going to close it out. So rock five and seven, make no tearing day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. So you might be at home watching TV, kicking back watching Netflix, chilling, you know, eating a, a, a big ass jug of ice cream, drinking a, a soda with some with some Pringles, and the Lord may just take you out, man. The Lord may allow your gas line to go off and just blow your ass up, man. The Lord may, may send some some uh, some mask gunmen to come in there and gun you down and your family. And, and the Lord ain't playing, man. The Lord can get you when you're most comfortable. That's why it says in your security, man, which is really your home, you know, or, or anywhere where you're secure, where you feel okay, you're comfortable. The Lord could totally destroy your comfortability because... You've been playing with him, man. And the Lord's nothing to play with. All right? So with that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Wairakakodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you true, sincere brethren out there, pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with this word, and to the rest of the church who believe as well. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him, none of this would even be possible. And with that, I want to say Shalom, all right?